Hello everybody, this is Preston Polder here with Pocket Jacks Comics. And Mike Wellman got into it with Ethan Van Skyver on Facebook. And this has this has made the news. I'm not outing private messages or anything here. This is a story was run on it and uh bleeding oh uh, no. Bounding into comics. Uh a trusted source of journalism. But, you know, you could definitely trust it on this one, because all they're doing is just basically posting some Facebook receipts here. And I find this interesting. So Mike Wellman versus Ethan Van Skyver. Because, um, I mean, look, on the one hand, we have just a egotistical narcissist who <laughs> controls this little crowd of customers and he will continually go out and virtue signal to them about this is the target of the week that we need to go attack in order to kind of, you know, boost fanaticism and sales. And on the other hand, we have Ethan Van Skyver. So, I mean, I, it, it's hard to pick a winner, um, except, well, no, actually it's not. It's, look, Ethan Van Skyver kicked Mike Wellman's ass. I'm, I'm going to be frank on this one. Um... And hats off to Mike for being a dumbass to play right into it. <laughs> I mean, when I saw this headline, I'm like, oh, I think I know what happened. Yeah. Um, Mike Wellman, boy. Um, that was my very first experience in the comic book industry. So I had just created White Lily 1. And I'm way further into my comic book career. And so now, looking back, I can say that one of the problems with having just one issue, uh, or for that matter, a small number of issues, or, you know, if, if your print runs aren't really high, then your cost per unit is kind of high. I mean, you know, if you want to sell your comic at $5 standard, then that means you're going to need to, you know, get the print cost down under that. And that, you know, most printers, if you walk into, you know, a print shop, even a fairly big print shop, and you go, hey, um, I want to do a 24-page comic book full color on, you know, a decent stock, you know, like, they're, they're what they're going to charge you is going to be five bucks. So that's pretty daunting. And secondly, comic book stores expect a 50% margin. So that really means you have to sell at a cost that's below two fifty, and let's say it's two dollars. Okay, so you got your print cost at two bucks, so you made fifty cents, and so so like you don't get much out of it. And comic book stores a lot of times don't act like they they're really all that excited about it anyway. Because let's face it, most amateur comics are not going to be big sellers, and they're not going to look great. So for the most part, it's it's kind of a transaction nobody really has any interest in. But whatever. Um, at the same time, there is supposed to be this idea that comic book stores will want to feature comic book creators and go, "Oh, hey, look at look at the hometown talent we got. Come on in, sit down. You know, you got you got the nice, bright, bushy-faced amateur going. Here's my comic book about." It's like Batman, but not really. It's this other thing. And, you know, like, it, it, it creates this local comic culture that, you know, I mean, this is kind of irreplaceable. Otherwise, all you really have in the store is just the same mass marketing you'd have anywhere else, right? I mean, if you walk into a comic book store in Portland, Oregon, or Dallas, Texas, or Orlando, Florida, or New York, uh, Manhattan, uh, Los Angeles, California, what really differentiates your customer experience in any of those locations. Honestly, having been around, not much. I mean, you you have the comics of the week, and they're there, and maybe one store might have more selection than the other store. But for the most part, you know, like, you got the guys behind the counter, there's the racks, go take a look. Uh, it's There's really not much to differentiate one store from another. So there's this idea that, oh, well, if we get a comic book creator in who's like, hey, this is me, and here's my special, you know, limited edition, small press run book uh, over here that, you know, you're kind of giving the customer something special. So um, I went down, 
And I talked with Mike Wellman, and at the time, he was running a store called the Comic Bug, and that was a, a, a two-location uh, outfit, and he was there. Uh, all right, well, first off, I sent him a message, right? Uh, just, you know, through the internet, as, as they do. You just, you know, you, I'm in sales. You're looking at comic book stores. You, you start emailing. But he, Mike Wellman's like, no, no, no. I want, I want you to come down to my store so I can talk to you. Okay, uh, Mr. Wellman, fair enough. So I go down there, and I'm like, here's my book, White Lily, story of the two deadliest female fighter pilots who ever lived. By the way, link in the description to sign up for the Kickstarter for White Lily issue five. Should be coming out in 30 days or less. And um, Mike Wellman's like, oh, wow, this is a nice looking book. Because, you know, I don't know if, you, if you've noticed, but I do tend to hire some very good artists to, to draw my stuff. So he, he was pretty impressed by that. And Mike Wellman is is definitely on the left, as we will see as we, we explore the story. But um, I figured White Lily should appeal to him in that regard, because, hey, it's got some of the people in my artistic team, um, you know, are, are, are kind of... Well, I, I'm not going to name them by name, but if you are familiar with, with who the SJWs are, um, and, you know, you kind of look at the team that put together White Lily 1, well, there, there are some people there who have some strong opinions in that direction. So I figure, hey, <laughs> sympathetico, right? Because we got that. that, that. And, um, yeah, he likes it. He's like, okay, great. Um, come down. We're, we do, we love local creators. Come on down. Here's a thing. Um, and, you know, we'll, we'll set a date. So we set a date. And just so you know, because I'm such a nice guy, uh, the store doesn't take a cut of, you know, what you sell uh, when, when you come down and do your signing. I'm like, oh, cool. I mean, fantastic. Um, and next, I asked the question that caused everything to unravel. And in hindsight, I don't even see why it was that big a deal. It's one of these things that's so small. Like, if Mike Wellman had the capacity of any kind of mature adult or a business person, there would just be very clear answers, and then life would move on. But instead, he's this petty, backstabbing, cowardly little man. So I asked him, would you like to carry this in your store? And that prompted a discussion. Now keep in mind, if I had just shut up and said, thanks, cool, I, I'll show up at the time, I'll say, but you know, like, look, I didn't know how the comic business was. I thought it might mean something if, you know, heaven forbid, readers might find it or, you know, so I asked the question and, you know, he's like, well, that's got to be 50%. And I'm like, well, why has it got to be 50 And so... They start telling me where I need to price my comic, and they, they, you know, I say they because at the time he asked me to come down, it was kind of their uh, their two store get together staff meeting. I don't know why he asked me to come down then, but it was strange. He had, or maybe that's just how people in the comic book industry like to do it. They want you to come in before their them and their little entourage. Uh, and be the dancing... Mo I, it, comic book people are weird. That's all I gotta say. But, um... So his his lieutenant, an Asian gentleman, um, was like... Hey, who, by the way, as I'm gonna go over later, he split ties with. Uh, so... Mike Willen's kind of an unstable guy. Uh, so the person that he virtue signaled went to bat for, um... In, in the encounter with me, he uh, he would later be like, no, no, this guy's a Trump supporter, whatnot. Like, Mike Wellman uses the term Trump supporter like Ethan Van Skyver uses SJW. Uh, it's, it's... I have a feeling they could get along <laughs> if only they were on the same side. But uh, um, his manager, if you will, is like, starts making this argument for why... I need to price my comic 
at five dollars and give them fifty percent off and even that if that means I'm losing money on every copy sold it's okay because the readership I will gain because of the store uh, you know selling my comic book to their customers and I'm like okay that that makes like no sense right like how many how many copies of white lily one do i really think these people are going to move like 10 i so I, i'm going to you know i'm going to lose money on 10 copies um yeah i don't i don't think that's really going to work like why don't we just like why don't you price it at a little more or maybe take a little bit less of a of a percent rather than 50 and you know but they were very set that i needed to do things one way and i'm like well no i'm not going to sorry you know like look i I went to college, I studied economics, been in business, the whole thing. I'm not going to lose money on a product to make it up in volume. So that was that. And so I left. And I'm under the impression that, um, well, I have this date where I'm supposed to show up and do the thing, whatever, right. So um, time passes. And that's what was really weird about my encounter with Mike Wellman. Time passes. And... Uh, I get this this message, or yeah, that you know Mike Wellman mentioned you on Facebook, whatever. So I'm like, oh okay. So and by time passed, I mean this was like three weeks later, and so I'm like, oh, um, I guess it's he was announcing the upcoming signing, and um, instead, my and you know like boy, boy, if this just doesn't remind me of somebody. Instead, Mike Wellman goes and makes a big announcement uh, to his whole crowd that I spoke rudely to his Asian manager and that I was a racist Trump supporter. I don't know where the hell he got that. Like, if you Google me, it's it would find out at the time I was libertarian because I was one of the things the Texas Libertarian Party asked you to do on occasion is run for office. Oh, you know, yes, I, I have run for us, as Comicsgate has sometimes made hay with strange people. But uh, anyway, so they're like, he's a libertarian Trump supporter. Get him, right? And so, you know, meanwhile, like somebody had friended me earlier on Facebook. I'm like, okay. And this was, a, you know, someone from Mike who was there to look over my profile and just talk shit to feed the hate mob to come get me. Welcome to comics, Preston. Courtesy of Mike Wellman. So, you know, um, I, I pretty much blew it off. Uh, there was a con coming up where we were both in LA Comic Con. And people were in the thread like, I'm going to find this Preston. I'm going to beat his ass. And uh, my daughter was really concerned because this was right when she was starting to get savvy on social media. And she was just reading, you know, like her... 14, 50 year old mine is just reading this stuff and is like, all these people hate my dad and they've never even met him. I, I, she was um, shocked, I think. Um, what can I say? I guess I was a bit shocked myself. So that's Mike Wellman and he has since left the comic book. So let's read this story here from Bleeding Cool. So first, let's start with this Bleeding Cool article. Mike Wellman leaves the comic book, opens the atomic basement in Los Angeles. Uh, so this is by Rich Johnston. So you know, it's a reliable news source. There I was thinking the comic book was actually Mike Wellman's own comic book store. With two Los Angeles outlets, he was always one of the most active and prominent comic book retailers online. And many of the stores we ran about this, uh, and many of the stores we ran about the store came from his enthusiastic plugging in my direction. But we hadn't run anything for a while. Maybe he was concentrating more on his writing career, his political activism or something, or maybe it was something else. Earlier this month, he posted a series of statements including, seriously considering a new direction here in life? I answer to no one. Considering options outside the comic bug, who wants to invest? I am leaving the comic bug soon. Change is good, something is necessary, and I am very proud of what June, whom I'm taking to be the uh, Asian manager, and I built it, the comic bug. It will be there always and forever. I'm pretty sure I started a new endeavor pretty soon in downtown LA. I hope many of you come along for the ride and, you know, continue to shop the bug. Yeah. Then Mike Wellman posted the news. I am okay, everybody. I will continue to be okay. Here's what's happening. I'm leaving the comic bug. 
I I will. Why does he start with I am okay? Like, why does it got it? Like, is he setting up a victim narrative? Or ha was he previously on social media being like, oh, like, behind the scenes? Like, was he virtue signaling to his little audience of, oh, I'm, I'm going to have to leave the store, but it's a good thing, but screw that person? I'm okay, everybody. I will continue to be okay. Here's what's happening. I'm leaving the comic book. They will continue to serve and provide the finest in South Bay comic service to you. The next two or three months, I'll be on my atomic basement in downtown LA. It will be very curated and fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't wait for the awesomeness ahead of us. 2020 is going to be the best year ever. So, and then there was problems with the store Comics, Inc. Change is good. This has been a long time coming, and a lot of chips are in the air right now. But they will fall where they land, and all will be good. Tumultuous times for sure. But I didn't invoke this. I am just responding accordingly. But then... There was problems with the store Comic Inc. What went down with Comics Inc. has been weighing on my mind for almost five years now. And the fact my business partner is a Trump supporter drives me farther away from the comic book. It's sickening. They were closing. My friend Andre told me they were shutting down, so I thought we could buy them and continue business as usual. My partner asked the staff there, who has been employed there for 17 years, to work for free for a few weeks to prove themselves behind my back. He asked them not to tell me about this. Oh, He's a Trump supporter and a bastard. Well, I, I'm pretty sure that uh, Mike Wellman is being completely 100% on the level that we know that his partner behind his back went to the employees of the store he was about to ask and asked them all to work for free, right? We can absolutely trust that Mike Wellman is not representing the other person whom he hopes to vilify as being completely unreasonable. However, such is the depiction of certain folks to Mike Wellman and the comic bug that it overflowed somewhat and Wellman had to make the following statement. I spoke with a member of the staff at the comic bug. People are threatening violence against <laughs> and the shop itself. Please don't do that. They are innocent in this and it makes me so sad that they are trapped in the middle of this trans transition. It's a transition, not an end of the store and I really love and appreciate everyone who's working there. Be good to them and please no threats. Mike Wellman is an absolute drama factory. He has been for years. He's an unstable personality, and he's always out to play the good white knight person there to correct the evil conservative Trump doers who are there to simply screw over everybody. So you can imagine he and Ethan Van Skyver are going to get together and make a lot of noise. I'm surprised it hasn't happened previously. So now, with that preamble, let's take a look at what happened between Mike Wellman and Ethan Van Skyver. So, Atomic, Cop, uh, Atomic Basement comic shop owner Mike Wellman took to Facebook to threaten to beat the living F out of Ethan Van Skyver, as well as blow his effing face off his skull. That sounds just like Mike. Yeah, that sounds like Mike. Wellman's comments came in response to a post from Ethan Van Skyver responding to a famed G.I. Joe writer, Larry Hama, describing Comicsgate. Hama described Comicsgate as a group of comic pros who are, rev who are reviving waning careers by pandering to misogynists, racists, and homophobes. Yes. Hama added, there... They have a hit list of creators they consider libtard SJWs. Pretty much everybody I admire in the business is on that list, so I'm rather proud of my inclusion. Yeah, yeah I mean, right? I think, I think we can agree on that, right? Like, Max Visaggio, uh, Gail Simone. Uh, you, look, you can name the names. We can all name the names, right? So, uh, yes, I, I think we have to agree with them about that. Uh, it's a group of comic pros who are... Yeah, okay. Um, so then Ethan Van Skyver does a masterful job of trolling here, right? Like, look, when he's good, he's good. And he's good at what he does. He's good at just, like, humiliating practical jokes and pranks and gay ops. He's really good at this stuff. So uh, Ethan Van Skyver comes in and sets this scenario up, and Mike Wellman just walks right into it, so... Van Skyver responded to these comments saying, I've got bad news for you, Larry Hama. If there were a list, which there isn't, you wouldn't be on it. All right, well, we know that there's a list. Right, moving on, moving on from Ethan's denial that a list exists. 
He continues, we love you. Richard C. Meyer especially admires you and cites your comics as the reason he chose to enlist and serve his country. Your G.I. Joe comics and their lessons in loyalty inspired us to stand up for each other. Wait, man, when Ethan's good, he's so good. Like, as I'm reading this, my chest is swelling. Like, oh, the human sunbeam is shining. Let's see. Your G.I. Joe comics and their lessons in loyalty inspired us to stand up for each other uh, as your friends tried to exert pressure on us to betray what we knew was right. At Advanced Skyver, he continued... This is the difference between Facebook and Twitter. On Facebook, it was a really long post. He continued, We stood behind Richard C. Meyer in his lawsuit against Mark Wade because of your G.I. Joe comics, and we have stood together in solidarity and not giving Kickstarter our business because of their persecution of conservative and political discrimination. You taught us what it means to be a real American hero. <laughs> God damn it, Ethan. That's good. That's your best writing, right there. This, this is brilliant. All right. You inspire Comics Gate, concluded Van Skyver. <laughs> to which Mike Wellman responds, Oh my God, Wellman is such a bonehead. Uh, in response to this post, uh, man, Ethan, Ethan's so funny, he, he brought tears to my eyes. Good job. In response to this post, uh, Wellman threatened Van Skyver with physical violence. He wrote, I can't wait to see you at a show, Ethan, and beat the living you know, F out of you. He would then double down. I am literally going to beat you. <laughs> How dare you insult legends like Larry Holla? Okay, Mr. Welbit, what exactly did Ethan do to Larry Holla? Uh, insult like, as well as our industry itself, he added, you know, F you, I am a libtard with fists. <laughs> You're going to feel <laughs> the next time <laughs> we are at a convention together. He loves to threaten people at conventions. Jesus Christ, this guy is off his nut. Wellman reiterated, I'm going to be <laughs> out of you in front of everyone. <laughs> Wellman then called Van Skyver a bitch. He, he <laughs> stated, you are such a little cowardly bitch, Ethan Van Skyver. Let's fight. Let me... Feed you a fist sandwich, you little bitch. Van Skyver responded, I may make a video about this dude. Considering it. Van Skyver also posted on Twitter or Facebook DM from Wellman threatening to murder him. The DM reads, give me your home address and give uh, the police a reason to be uh, concerned because I will come to your house and put your thing face off your skull. <laughs> that is a fact. Oh my God, Wellman is crazy. Van Skyver read the DM thread on a YouTube live stream. So, uh, ah, uh, wow. Um, so <laughs> that happened. Uh, I gotta say, look, uh, well done, Ethan. Um, for that, you get a round of applause. By the way. That is brilliant. I, <laughs> I might have to start. I mean, the problem is Wellman is on Facebook and he, like, you know, protects his stuff. Uh, so, you know, and his Twitter makes it so easy, you know, and, but anyway, uh, there is a link down in the description, as I mentioned, for White Lily 5, that campaign is coming up. This has been Press and Pulse with Pocket Jacks Comics. Thank you very much for your time. Take care.